All right, so let's finish up this lecture. And so this shouldn't be too long because we're not actually going to prove anything. We're just going to say a bunch of things. Well, we always say a bunch of things, but sometimes we say things that are proving things. This is saying things that are not proving things. So this is tensor products. So let's say you have a right. So R here is we're going to assume just that it's a general ring. We aren't going to assume commutativity, at least not yet. So here, let M be a right R module. So you take things in M and you multiply them on the right by element in R. And then N is a left R module. Then we're going to define the tensor product of M and N with respect to R, which we'll write like this. And what it is, is it's the integer span of elements of this form. So you take all elements of the form x tensor y, and then you can take um, integer multiples of these elements, and you can add them together as well. Um, and here, of course, x comes from m, y comes from n. And how do you combine these elements? Like, what are the rules? What are the rules of the game? So we require this thing to be bilinear, and by that we mean that if you take x1 plus x2 in the first coordinate, tensor it with y, then you could break it up like this. So if you were to combine these two things together, if you were to add these two things together, you get this. Similarly, in the second coordinate, like so. And then if you've got a... If you multiply by r on the right here, then you multiply, that's the same as multiplying by r on the left here. So it's important that you keep in mind which one is the right module and which one is the left module because that's important. Um, and then of course, we have a universal property, which we always have been saying after like a lot of these things, whenever we're like constructing new modules and just new things in general, I guess. So first of all, we have a map from the direct product of M with N, which is just um, tuples where the first coordinate is in M and the second coordinate is in N. And it maps into this tensor product and it's a bilinear map and in parentheses, it's bilinear over Z. So what does that mean? Well, Typically, when you look at bilinearity, what that means is that you have linearity in the first coordinate, which is this thing. You have linearity in the second coordinate, which is this thing. And when you think of linearity, you typically think of not only being able to commute um, the operation of plus, but you typically have some sort of scalar multiplication that you're dealing with as well. Um, so, oftentimes, like, with a... With like linear maps in a vector space, you're thinking about like scalar multiples. Like if you've got a scalar multiple on the inside, you can pull it outside the argument. Um, if you're thinking of modules, then if you're um, if you're multiplying by an element r of the ring on the inside of the argument, that's the same as multiplying on the outside. So if you have a module. It, if you have a ring R and an R linear map F and you have an R module M, then F of R applied to M is the same as R applied to F of M. Um, so typically you have some sort of uh, scalars that you're working with, but here we don't really have that. Um, there's, we'll, we'll get to this more later, but there's really no way to let R act on here. So um, when we say over Z, really what that means is that those scalars would just be integers. But if you think about what that means, that just means like if you were to multiply something by 2, then you can pull that 2 inside. But that's, that's, that's basically exactly what this says. Like if you were to... Um, take x1 and x2 to be the same thing, then this is x plus x tensor y is the same as x tensor y plus x tensor y. Or in other words, 2x tensor y is equal to 
2 times x tensor y. So that's all we're referring to by being bilinear over z is that not only do we have this addition, this, um, uh, can we, do we sort of have linearity with respect to addition in the left and right coordinates, but, or first and second coordinates, but you also have, um, you can multiply by integers as well, but in a, multiplying by integers really just means applying that um, operation like over and over and over again to the same element. So, so you're not really adding in anything new. It's just, um, it's, it's, it's really just bilinear with respect, um, in the sense of addition in both coordinates. So anyways, I've dwelled enough on that. That was a lot. So we have a map and it satisfies. So I of X times R comma Y is I of X comma R times Y. So, yeah, and that's basically, it satisfies this. All right, so there's that. Also, if you've got a, um, a bilinear map F from M tensor N to P, um, bilinear in this same definition. Um, but here P is just some abelian group. Um, and we, we also assume here that F satisfies um, this condition, this thingy here, then there exists a unique map F tensor from, no, F tilde from the tensor product of M and N to P. Um, and this is a group homomorphism such that F tilde composed with I is equal to F. So probably should have drawn this, but basically what you've got is, oh, that's why I didn't draw it because I don't have room. I will make room down here. So you've got M cross N. You've got M tensor N. And you've got the other thing. What is the other thing? P. I don't think I drew this the way that you normally draw it. Oh, well. We'll work with it. Anyway, so I goes here, F goes here, and F tilde goes here. Yeah, so this thing commutes. Yeah, typ typically I think you'd write the P here and the M tensor N here. That's sort of how these diagrams sort of look usually, but oh well. All right. So observe that all we're doing here is we're talking about groups. And that's because if you look at M tensor N, this thing really only has a group, an abelian group composition law on it. And the way you can figure out how to um, compose two elements is you basically, um, well, if it's really simple, then you're really just doing the composition in M and N separately. But if you're combining more complicated things, you sort of combine it with these laws and you just make it work. So we can get an abelian group structure on it, but we don't get a module structure on it. Um, like, you might think that maybe we can let an element act on it like you just take an element R acting on X tensor Y by this thing, which is the same as this thing, but it turns out if you look through the, um, the module thingies, I forget, I forget where, where you mess this up, but it, it turns out like it, it just doesn't work. And you might think, oh, well maybe, l like my gut reaction to seeing it was like, oh, well, if, if only we could work with R inverse, but that, doesn't exist because this is a ring. There's no multiplicative inverses per se. So we're, we're, we're kind of we're kind of stuck and it turns out that there isn't really a good module structure that you can define on it. I mean I'm sure there is a module structure you can define but in general it doesn't there, there isn't really anything more you can say about this in the case of R just being 
a an arbitrary ring. But if it's commutative, then you can say more because if you let's use a to denote a commutative ring, then we can do the same thing. But now remember that if we have a module over an abelian uh, a module over a commutative ring, then talking about left and right modules are really the same thing. And that's not necessarily true for non-commutative rings. So basically what we can do then is um, we can give it a module structure in this scenario by this equals this equals this. And here, of course, we're multiplying on the left in both cases, but that's okay because M and N are just modules. They're not specifically left or specifically right modules. Um, and yeah, this makes everything work out. And we get our universal property here is basically the same as before, but now we have um, we have module structures everywhere. So we have the same map I, but now it's a bilinear, which is um, basically you have that sort of linearity with respect to addition in the first and second coordinates, i.e. you have this and this, but you also have lin scalar, um, like you can move around scalars. So um, what would that look like? Um, so if you have R applied to I of some element, I don't, I don't know what elements in here look like. Let's call it, no, I don't want to call it A. Um, let's call it M for module or T for tensor. Let's call it T for tensor. This is, that's not uh, conventional notation. I just, I'm just looking for something to call these things. So this is I of RT. And here, of course, well, I guess I should call this A because these are elements of capital A, which is an abelian ring. No, commutative ring, whatever. A for, A for abelian, eh, whatever. Okay, so um, do I say abelian here? Oh yeah, I do, but that was for groups and that makes sense. Okay, so yeah, so if you're multiplying by a scalar on the outside, you can mult. Nope, where's the wrong thing? So scalar on outside, is scalar on inside. And before we couldn't do that here because this was not defined because this thing is an element of the tensor product. And in this example, you do not have an action of your ring on the tensor product. But here we do, so it's fine. Okay, and this is what that scalar thingy is, okay. Um, and then also if we have P, which is not just an abelian group, but an A module, then there exists a unique, and we have this thing, which is not just a group homomorphism, but is A bilinear, which we just discussed. Then we have a unique map F tilde, which does the same thing. So here, the picture looks the same, just replace R with A. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. The other thing is, like, note that if you were just looking at these two, you needed to have this one be a right module and this one be a left module. So if you were to try to tensor another one onto this, there, there'd there be no way to do it. Um, like, you certainly can't do it inductively because in order to do it inductively, the first thing you're tensoring has to be a right module or the second thing has to be a left module. And this thing that you end up with isn't even a, is not in any sense a module. So you couldn't replace M or N in this scenario with some sort of tensor product. But here you could do that and that would work out just fine. And so you can just take a tensor product of, you could take like a finite tensor product, a tensor product of finitely many a modules and things would work just fine. Um, so it's, I guess it's good to know that you can do that if you wanted to. I don't know. But yeah, that's
pretty much it. And that wraps up this lecture.